Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. Art and I are with, with the lovely Dr. Liz Lister. Hi, Dr. Liz. You know, I know today we, we're, we're going to talk about fertility. And we normally sort of try to make sure that these are things that our audience, 50 and over, our second act would be interested in. Why should we be interested in fertility? I thought there was a couple of interesting pieces of information that people might find interesting. For example, the fact that the incidence of twins is increasing. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I personally don't understand people who want to have babies when they're in their 50s, but we know it happens. And this, the t rate of twins has been increasing. Between 1980 and 2015, the rate of twins rose by 42%. Oh, Lord. Yeah. A now, lot is that because of in, in, in vitro fertile? Yes. Yeah. Correct. Correct. They, they refer to it as ART, Assisted Reproductive Techniques. And that includes in vitro fertilization, it includes insemination, it includes all kinds of fancier types of methods. That's absolutely right. So the biggest increases have been in North America, the second biggest increase was in Europe, and then also Australia, New Zealand, that, that part of the world as well. Hmm. So, as no, have... so, so as people are having babies later in life now, uh, uh, and they maybe just want that one because they sort of feel they miss out. They may not have just one. They may have two. That's uh, right. That's <laughs> exactly right. And that's what happens. So that's how twins are formed, is there can either be more than one fertilized egg. So, for example, in in vitro, luckily the IVF techniques are getting better, and so they're not implanting. They used to implant a whole bunch of embryos, hoping that one or two would survive. But the whole process has improved, so they're not implanting that many anymore. But they will often implant two. And they will often result in twins. Wow. All right. And then the other way is if an embryo forms one sperm, fertilizes one egg, but then the embryo splits. And that's when we see, I, that, that's what they refer to as identical twins. Right. All right. And that happened to a friend of mine. She had both. She had in vitro fertilization of two embryos, and then one of those embryos split into twins. <laughs> and so she oh had goodness. triplets. So she had three children. <laughs> she did. Oh, she she did. All well, right. So my my wife and I had twins, twenty five uh, fifty years ago. Uh, so I understand the the uh, the value and the downside of right. uh, multiple births. That's right. That's exactly but, right. As Art pointed out, a lot of this is because people are getting married later, having children later. Everything seems to be later. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other maybe medical phenomenon that's causing this? Yes. As a woman is older, the, a, a woman is born with all the eggs that she will ever have. Right. Therefore, as she gets older, the egg quality might not be the same at 40 that it was at 20. Mm. And some scientists feel that that is what lends itself to the splitting. Oh. This is not exact. It's sort of more of a theory than proven, but it's an idea that the egg is not exactly following the usual program. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As as she is older, and uh, so also there are different procedures that or processes that get a woman's body ready for these types of techniques. So for example, the hormonal treatments can cause a woman to ovulate more and release more than one egg. I see. Okay, so these all these techniques are increasing the incidence of twins in a lot of parts of the world. Not in Africa. Africa has stayed the same. They've they, that is where the highest twinning rate is in the world actually, but it has not gone up in the last 30 years. Hmm, that's so that's interesting. interesting. Now, I think it's ironic that um, we're having, as a whole society, the whole Earth, generally, is having more twins, more multiple births, while at the same time, the birth rate, at least in developed countries, the birth rate is going down. 
uh, in America, we're I heard a statistic that we're having less than 2.3 children. We're closer to 1.9 mm. or 8. Exactly. So, which means we're not even replacing ourselves. That's right. And of course, that opens up a whole debate about whether we need immigration because we're not replacing ourselves. Um, and I think that same thing is happening in Europe, if I'm not mistaken. So, oh, that is absolutely right. Yes, yeah, there are, I, I there find are, it very ironic. That is correct. That's called sub-replacement fertility. And it's yeah. very important for us to keep our minds open and understand that it doesn't have a racial background one way or the other because, for example, there are countries that have high birth rates, but they also have high infant mortality rates. So uh, a high birth rate does not necessarily increase the population. So you're absolutely right. There's definitely a concern in a lot of areas of the world that fertility has decreased, mostly because people are wanting to pay more attention to their children, not have more children than they feel that they can manage economically. Uh, and that in some areas that have high birth rates, that is why they have more babies because they have very high infant mortality rates, infant and child mortality. And so they are just trying to make sure that they end up with enough children. Sure. So we yeah. have to. Sure. Also, I think there was, a, there was a point where if you're more agrarian, the more kids you have, the more help you have, uh, let's say to work a farm and things like that. So I guess it's a whole balance of things, but let's, for our audience, which is primarily uh, the United States at this point in time, um, there. So, I guess the fertility thing is that we, I know uh, certainly over the last thirty, forty years, every so often we would see an article about a woman in her fifties, and then sixties, and then even right. a a seventies uh, person who uh, would have a child. Uh, so it seems as if that not only whether it's uh, uh, with assistance or not, uh, getting pregnant at a later age is not only more frequent and more acceptable, but that the outcomes are actually much better than they used to be. We would think that, well, if somebody had the baby in the 50s or 60s, they might have more trouble delivering uh, a live child and so on and so forth. But all that's changed as well, hasn't it? Absolutely. It has, everything has improved. And uh, it's expanded that window of fertility. I'm here in Silicon Valley, and at Facebook and Google, they are paying for their young female employees to freeze their eggs. This technology is not as good as freezing embryos. However, it's catching up. It is getting there. There's a lot of investing going on. They want these women to be able to give their all to these companies. So I know that that's maybe a little bit controversial just in and of itself in terms of work schedules. But from a fertility standpoint, they want to make sure that these women are taking advantage of all the career opportunities and still feeling comfortable that they'll be able to have kids later on if they want to. Wow. I have a quick question for you in your old job, uh, which uh, as an OBGYN, uh, where we originally knew you uh, from, uh, you must have delivered hundreds, if not thousands of babies. What was the oldest patient you had, uh, if you remember? Well, my oldest patient was in her 40s. Oh, However, wow, really old? That was really old. Little, yeah, when my, kid, <laughs> my, when my kids were little, when they were toddlers, I had a friend who had a kid the same age, and she was 51 when she had her son. Wow. So it was pretty funny because when I lived, I lived in Los Angeles when I had my kids and I was kind of an older mom. A lot of my friends like at the mommy and me classes with the other little babies and toddlers were in their twenties and I was in my thirties. Uh, but then I moved to Orange County. So this friend was in Orange County and, uh, and she was in her fifties. I'm in my, I'm in my thirties. She's in her fifties. So that was fun because it made me not be, uh, not be the oldest one among the among the moms, mm. <laughs> but she had the energy for it. She she loved it. Great. Yeah. Well, so thanks for this very interesting update on what medicine, fertility, culture, a whole bunch of other stuff. So for all of for all of our um, 
uh, Br'er and what was what's what's the opposite of Br'er Rabbit? A, uh, a lady rabbit out there in their fifties oh. and sixties is. Don't worry about it. Just contact Dr. Liz and she'll she'll let you know the straight scoop. But you're you're in for a fun time, uh, except maybe getting up at uh, the age of uh, sixty five with a newborn. Uh, I don't know about that. Except if you're a grandparent. Me neither. <laughs> I'm with you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.